Hi Tri-State, welcome to Facebook Live Thursday. Um, I want to welcome you all. Um, before we get started, I just want to make a quick announcement. With 2020 quickly approaching, we're considering making some changes to our Facebook Live broadcast. So I just want to let you know to keep an eye out on our page for a poll where you can vote. We want to hear your input on whether or not we want to keep Facebook Lives to a weekly thing or once a month or twice a month. However often you guys want to see us, that's um, what we will do. But in the meantime, we've got John Wilbur with us and he's got some good information for us. And so um, stay tuned if you're driving. We ask that you please wait till you're stopped and this video will be available for you to watch when it's safe to watch it. So I'm gonna flip it on over to John. Thank you, Riley. And uh, certainly wanna thank everybody for, for listening in. As she said, we are gonna have a poll out there in terms of how Frequently, you'd like to see these events. We think they've been a, a big success, but we're always looking to uh, make them better and make sure they fit what you guys are looking for. So uh, make sure you get a chance to respond to that uh, poll when you can. Also, during our uh, event today, you're certainly willing, will, uh, you're able to send in questions. Riley will get those. She'll feed me those questions to me. I uh, will try to get to as many of them as we can. Um, I've got a list of topics we'll address, but if some things come up that uh, take us off topic, that's that's just fine too. Um, you, you may you may see, but we're in my favorite place in tri-state land, which is the Legacy Lodge. Pittman's Legacy Lodge, which is uh, really symbolic of, of what we do here, which is we care about people, and we try to show it with one of the, uh, really the state-of-the-art driver facility in the nation that we think, um, and it's just, it's uh, great to be here in Joplin, Missouri at our, at our Legacy Lodge. Um, next door, as most of you know, we have our, our driver training center. I'm pleased to say we have 13 highly qualified company drivers in there uh, going through their orientation. They'll be done tomorrow and they'll be driving for us over the weekend. It continues just what we've been doing as far as bringing in great drivers all year and just another another crop of them here right next door to me in, in, our, in our training center. So we've uh, met with them, I welcomed them, and certainly I thank them for making the decision to join our company. Um, what I tell all of our drivers is that um, I know they can get a job anywhere they want in the, in the country with any trucking company on any day. It's our job not to forget that, and we work real hard at that every day. Welcome to our, our, our new team members uh, next door. Um, I wanted to start out by just giving you a little bit of year in review as far as uh, the year's not done, but we're approaching the end of the year of 2019. So what did it look like and, and, and what did we accomplish? Well, first of all, most importantly, we remain number one in almost every sector that we operate in. We're number one in the military, we're number one in commercial explosive, we're number one in hazardous waste, and I believe we're number one with our defense contractors. So we're doing a great job, we're, 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 we're whipping our competition, and we're doing it the old fashioned way. We are outworking and outsmarting them every day, and it's all because of our drivers. We've got the best fleet of drivers out there and you guys are what win it. You're, you're the winners and we really, really, really appreciate everything that you guys do um, every day. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, just specifically how uh, 2019 is turning out, this is a good year. Uh, if it wasn't for 2018, we'd be calling this a great year. 2018 was one of the uh, great years in trucking history. Uh, we are not far behind 2018. And this is the best year the company's ever had other than 2018. So it didn't quite meet our expectations, but it's still a very strong year. The company's doing very well. Um, and again, that's thanks to you guys. In terms of our freight base this year, um, I've spoken to particularly our owner operator partners out there. Our commercial freight is, uh, came in stronger than we expected this year, slightly higher volumes and higher pricing than we expected. Our, the DOD freight, military freight, not so much. We're down about 20% below what we expected. Uh, and the pricing has also dropped a little bit in the DOD sector. So that was an unexpected, unpleasant surprise, but we dealt with it as best we could by filling in with commercial freight. And that's really the difference maker between us and all of our ammo carriers that we, we compete with. We're the largest DOD uh, carrier in the market, yet it's only about 35% of our load count. Most of our, a lot of our DOD competitors, it's 80, 90% of their load count. So our commercial freight is the difference maker for us. It always has been, and it, and it always will be. Um, 
In terms of other things that we accomplished this year, I know uh, equipment is always very important to you guys. So here's what we did with equipment. We brought in 65 new trucks, and we brought in, for the first time in a long time, 55 new flatbeds. Um, so that was what we did this year. I'll tell you what we have planned for 2020, which is even bigger. But um, we didn't bring in any new vans because last year we purchased 350 vans. So it was the time to start working on our flatbed fleet. And I know that our, uh, our drivers in the flatbed uh, fleet will appreciate, already are appreciated. And we've got more coming in 2020. Um, we, uh, the other thing we uh, implemented this year for our company drivers, which has been a big hit, is this retention bonus. And that's a four cent per mile, all miles bonus that you received on your you receive on your anniversary month. So we started that in January so that you know if you drive hundred thousand miles, that's that's four thousand dollars you receive uh, you know on your anniversary. If you're a team and you did that, you each get four, that's eight thousand dollars for the team. On average those retention checks have been about six thousand dollars each. So it's been a great success for our, it's something for our company drivers to look forward to as their anniversary comes about during the year. And uh, that will continue, uh, that was definitely a success, and so we're gonna continue that in 2020. Um, that really kind of wraps up, you know, everything that, uh, kind of the big picture of what we did in 2019. We do expect that uh, November and December uh, will be busy. Most trucking companies, you know, uh, get quiet uh, over the holidays. We stay relatively busy. A big portion of that is because a lot of our competitors nearly shut down. They're, they, their owner operators tend to all go home and maybe that's all they have as owner operators. And so we get called by customers uh, begging us for capacity on Thanksgiving week and Christmas week. Uh, New Year's week and in between. So we'll be relatively busy through the rest of this uh, rest of this year and hopefully we'll dodge any uh, any nasty weather. So for those of you that are going to stay out uh, some of those weeks, they're actually going to, you should see some nice nice freight. Um, as far as what to expect in, in 2020, well let me stop there for a minute. Riley, is there any any uh, questions that we have that I should be addressed that I haven't hit? Um, not yet. Okay, all right. Again, anybody has any questions? Uh, feel free to send them in. Uh, if not, I certainly have plenty to go over, so don't worry about it. Um, 2020, again, if we look back in 2019, we came into this year expecting our commercial freight to, to grow slightly and have a little bit better pricing. We did, we did better than that, but we expected our uh, DOD freight to at least remain flat to, to 2018, and the military shipped a lot less than we expected, not to Tri-State, but just to the industry. Part of that, and, and we didn't get any kind of a forecast, we never do from them, part of that is they put, were successful in putting more on rail. So the trucking industry with the DOD did lose, some, did lose volume to the rail partners, and that, that's part of the answer. So for, 2020, or for 2020, here's what we're expecting. We're expecting continued success in our commercial business. We expect it to be up at least 5% both in volume and in pricing. Um, there's not many companies in the trucking industry that can say that about, about 2020. They tend to be a little more worried about volume and price. Uh, we are not. A lot of that is uh, really two reasons. The service level that, that you guys provide our commercial customer customers is exceptional. And our, our sales team led by Don Welchoff has just done a superb job, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of continuing to find new accounts that fit our profile and to grow our existing accounts. That's really where a lot of our growth has come. Once we get a customer, we tend to continue to grow that customer's business over the years. And that's a formula that's worked for us and will continue. So in 2020, we expect uh, commercial freight to continue an upward trajectory. We expect our DOD freight next year to be flat. To this year. So we're not going to have any uns, uns, unpleasant surprises like we had uh, this year. Um, so we will grow next year. We will grow primarily with our commercial business. If, if there's going to be any surprises, it'd be nice to have uh, you know more military freight than we expect. But um, So for any of you, whether you're a company driver or you're an owner operator, I expect 2020 to look pretty similar to 2019, maybe a little bit better overall. Um, and that's, that's from the freight side. 
From the equipment side, it's gonna be a big year for us in, in 2020. We have 106 trucks planned to come in. We have 153 foot dry vans on, on order, and we have 65 more flatbeds coming in. So that's one of our biggest uh, years of purchase uh, that we've had in our history, and we'll have all that coming in. I, I don't have the mix of, of models yet in terms of Ken, but it'll be some mix of Kenworth, Volvo Freightliner or two of the three. Uh, it won't be one, uh, just one. So anyway, the, the equipment profile is gonna continue to get younger here. We already have a very young trailer and uh, truck fleet, but we'll make even more headway. Uh, and definitely we have the newest fleet in, in, the, in our industry that we compete with and we're, we're proud of that. Um, we also have a new health plan. For, and now I'll talk to our, our company drivers and any you know, office or shop employees that are, that are listening. We have a new health plan. We went on a, a, a new health plan this year. It didn't really work out as well as I would have liked or that we would have liked. And we're on that with all of our sister companies in the DASCI organization. So we're going to a new plan next year. It is a little bit more expensive depending on which plan you're on. You're on. It's a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan, very PPO, very standard. You'll, you'll like it. Um, we are very pleased to say that we are still going to offer the bronze plan to employees with zero premium to the employee. Okay, so that the company, 100% company paid premiums for the bronze plan, employee only. And again, that's something we've strived for for years. We finally got there, we're gonna maintain that. Um, all the other plans and levels are a little bit more expensive than they are this year. Some of them significantly more expensive, particularly our platinum plan, but um, you know, that's where healthcare is nowadays, but you have a several, you know, and open enrollment is now closed, but you all had, you know, choices to make uh, in terms of how much you wanted to spend or not spend at all and, and go on the bronze plan. So that open enrollment is now done. January 1, we start with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield and uh, all the company drivers will be getting their cards and, and everything they need, uh, data packs from, uh, uh, re regarding that, that health plan. I'll stop there for a second. Do we have anything else uh, that needs, needs yeah, to be addressed? Yeah, we have a question from Blake Warren. He says, is there any news on the on Tri-State trying to acquire property in Salt Lake City? As a matter of fact, uh, the team member who is, is running that project just left our, the lodge. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know that we're gonna be buying or building. We're probably gonna be leasing a facility in Salt Lake. Uh, it's uh, really probably our number one priority. We're evaluating different options right now, dealing with landlords. So we are going to open a, um, a facility hopefully in the first quarter of 2020 in Salt Lake to replace our drop yard there. It will have a shop uh, driver facilities and and so it'll be more of a terminal as opposed to the drop yard that we have there now. It will either be I think it's fair to say either in Twilla or in the West Valley portion of Salt Lake City. So yes, that is a great question. High on our list. Uh, we are down to two or three sites that we're working with now and working with those landlords. So expect news on that uh, very, very, very quickly. Great question. Um, we have another question, but I'm just going to answer it because it's a quick answer. Good. Uh, we're, we do the ELD system because of the mandate, not because the company just decided, just so you know. Right. Yeah, the ELD mandate is uh, December 15th or right around in there, I think it is. And so we're, we'll, we're going to be 100% compliant. Everybody's got to be 100% compliant. That's not a choice. Yeah. And then we have a comment from Tina Bruff, and she basically says that we want more miles. That so. is a great lead-in to uh, something that I was going to finish with. When we look at our business, the, the, the one thing that happened this year when the military freight didn't come in as expected, what we had to do was we, and our operations team led by Russ Thompson and, and Wade and Vonda, they did a great job, and everybody, the planners, dispatchers, CSRs, they immediately pivoted and tried to fill those miles with uh, commercial freight. And we did a really good job of it, even if it wasn't at the same pricing level as some of the military freight we, we didn't get. 
But what we realized is uh, we still have a lot of capacity within our fleet, okay? Meaning there's a lot more loaded miles we could be, get out of our fleet. And a lot of that is on a weekend capacity, okay? Um, so our, actually it's the last thing written on my sheet, my cheat sheet here is utilization. Our, our biggest objective next year is improving our utilization, which means more revenue miles, more loaded miles, per truck, per week. And that is, uh, we're already working on it. It is, uh, it's a significant impact. We'd like to see two or 300 or more, more loaded miles per truck, per week. It'll have a huge impact for our drivers. It'll have a huge impact for our, uh, for our company. Um, great question. That is our, literally our number one objective next year is we've got the freight, We've got the drivers, we've got, we have to utilize them better. We've got to eliminate, I know you guys don't like to sit, uh, and we've got to eliminate the sit time. We've got to get more my, miles uh, on our, loaded miles, not deadhead, loaded miles on our trucks every single week. Uh, again, I can't emphasize em uh, enough how important that's going to be for our operations team this year. And if you don't see it by first quarter, second quarter, let me know. Um, I should be able to see it also, but uh, I'd really love to hear from any and all drivers as we get two, three, four months into the year. Obviously, you got the winter to deal with, and so you know, take that into account. But we really need to be moving you guys more with with loads and uh, reduce sitting time. So keep an eye on that. Let me know how we're doing. That's that's number one objective for for 2020. Okay, we're good for now. Okay, um, great questions by the way. X, awesome. Um, and hello, I didn't say hello to everybody out there, company drivers or owner operators. Um, I haven't really shared a lot with you guys. Um, I have been, and I haven't been in touch particularly with our owner operator fleet like I normally do. I have been engaged in a project uh, for the last two or three months in Dallas at our parent company, Dasky, uh, helping out um, with some changes and improvements we're making at the parent company. I've been asked to go back there and help out for six to nine months. So instead of uh, being in Arizona every week, I've been in Dallas working with a lot of our sister companies, working with the CEO, uh, Chris Easter, uh, CEO of Dasky. Uh, I'll, I'll be there probably through middle of next year. Uh, and I'm really doing that just to help the organization out so we can kind of get back on our track of really aggressive growth here. Um, so. If any of you have been wondering where I am, and not in front of this camera, not at my desk, that's what I've been doing for the last couple of months and will continue to be. And I'd really like to thank everybody in Joplin, in Arizona, in Tennessee, everywhere they are. I mean, it's no, we haven't missed a beat because I've been, you know, helping out our, our, our parent company. And I really appreciate that's the kind of team we have here. Uh, it's kind of the next man up if you're a football player. It's, you know, somebody goes down or they're, they're out, uh, people step in and fill in, and that's what's happened here. Um, the other thing that I did want to say that uh, the Salt Lake question, again, great question. Uh, I, you've heard me guys talk a lot about what we want to do in Crane. I'd really like to get a new facility in Crane. Literally in the next two or three weeks, we are closing on a piece of property right uh, up the street from, from our current facility. It's about 28 or 29 acres, completely flat. It's, uh, we're gonna build a new terminal there in Crane. Uh, it's gonna be a much improved uh, situation in terms of the facility we have right now. I don't know exactly when we're gonna break ground. We're, we're buying the land here, assuming everything happens according to plan uh, in, in mid-December. Um, so we'd love to break ground sometime next year. Once we break ground there, I'll be able to give you a uh, better timetable in terms of uh, you know when our when to expect that new facility to be up up and running. Uh, the Salt Lake, what we I would expect Salt Lake to be up and running way before then because again we're not going to be buying or building there. We're going to be taking an existing building and leasing it and maybe retrofitting it to our needs. But um, Salt Lake is such a high volume uh, area for us. We've operated with you know a couple of local drivers in Salt Lake who are some of the best local drivers we have in our fleet, and they do a great job, and a drop yard. So we've got so much equipment coming through there and so many drivers, we've got to get a facility you know, that supports our equipment and supports our drivers. So uh, that's definitely, hopefully will be open first quarter of, uh, of 2020. And again, on the, on the uh, 
Crane, I don't have a date yet for that, but we're, we're moving down. In terms of other facilities, uh, we're looking at some improvements that we hope to get underway in Plattsburgh uh, at our current facility there, but just, uh, just some improvements to the facility we'd like to get. We're doing things that may, you may not see, but we have uh, roof repairs going on in several buildings, uh, some of these older buildings here in Joplin, the truck and trailer shops, we're doing some roof repair. We're also doing some roof repair in our Loudoun facility this year. So we're continue, continuing to invest in all of our facilities, whether it's facilities we own or facilities that we lease. Uh, when I was talking to our drivers in class, and you know this, when you see this facility, I know you can only see the fireplace, uh, but it's incredible. I know most of you, if not all of you, have been here. You know, we're really, and, and again, this is the crown jewel. Uh, we're actually having our holiday company party here tomorrow night, which is why I'm here. Um, but, you know, we're really trying to get all of our facilities to this standard. They won't be of this magnitude just because of the size of this, but, you know, you should deserve this, this quality in any tri-state or ATCO or Roadmaster type facility that you go to. So it's, it's, it'll take years to get where I really want to get, but every year we're making, we're making headways. And the facilities, um, you know, that's where you guys get to rest and shower and launder and everything. So they're really important to us. And I like feedback. If you guys are in the field and you, whether it's a drop yard, a terminal, a, whether you have positive comments or constructive criticisms on our facilities, get them to me. Um, I'd love to, love to hear. We can't fix something if we don't know it's, it's broken. So um, I think that's probably uh, really about it. I, uh, again, I, I'm sorry I haven't been doing more of these. I think I want to thank Riley, uh, one, for managing these, for coming up with these. Uh, these have been a wonderful way for, I think, us to communicate with the drivers, for you guys to get to meet, not just me, more importantly, you know, department heads, people that we are just talking about before going on camera here, you know, people that may not uh, feel that comfortable talking to a big group or talking on camera, but they still get up here and they do their best and hopefully that, that shows you guys that it's real, it's genuine, it's not fake and it's not, it's not polished. It's the people that you work with and the support you every day, you know, telling you a little bit more about their job or their department and their function and, and allowing you guys the opportunity to ask them questions. So uh, again, I'm really happy with the way this uh, Facebook Live event program has worked for us. Uh, as, as Riley told you, we're going to take a poll. We may tweak the, the frequency of it a little bit, but we're going to certainly continue it as a vehicle to, to communicate with everybody out there. Um, before I end, I just ask Riley any other questions that need to be addressed? Yeah, we have a question from Carol Meeks Health. She says, with running more miles, will we be getting a raise on daily pay? Great. It, a Facebook Live event never goes by without asking, Am I, are we getting a raise? Um, <laughs> here's what I would say. You know, I, I don't have anything necessarily planned on, on that. That's a fair question. Uh, we look at our driver pay plans at the end of every year, so that review will be coming up. What I will tell you is this. Um, one of the things I'm most proud about, and again, I spoke to the drivers about this also this morning, is our pay scale, whether it's driver, the, the uh, daily pay, we have three levels of daily pay that you can move up with your credentials and over time, and the mileage bonus, as you know, goes from four cents to 14 cents over time and with credentials. So if nothing else changes as a company driver, you're going to make more money, your pay is going to increase Every, every year, or actually every six months, or every time you get credentials like a security clearance. So we already have built-in raises in every driver's pay uh, based on tenure. The longer you're here, the higher your rate is. So to, to that, you know, that's, that's always there. And then, as I mentioned before, the, uh, we don't, on the retention bonus, we haven't even had that for 12 months. So we still have a couple, November and December, the people at anniversary in those months have not even seen their, uh, their retention bonus check yet. So when we go through a whole year of that, that is in effect, look, it's, it's definitely a raise. We did not have that in 18, we have it in 19, four cents per mile, all miles. And again, we've had some, some of those checks has been as big as, as $8,500. So um, that's the, you know, I'm not trying to dodge the question. We review driver pay, we will review driver pay, but I don't know that we're gonna make any movements in the, uh, the daily pay, but we're, we're certainly gonna look at it. But even if we do nothing, we already have built in essentially races for all of our company drivers over time. So 
Anything else, Riley? Yes, so you mentioned that there's going to be improvements on many of our yards and terminals, um, but we have a question about the Richmond Yard, if there's going to be anything updated there, if you know. Great, great question. Um, I, I do know, and I'll get to that. I, I mean, we're doing, I always talk about the big things, obviously, when we were building Legacy Lodge or Crane or Salt Lake, but, you know, we're doing a lot of little things. I know we've got some stuff we're trying to work on in Anniston um, and some other places where we just have oh, uh, uh, Camden. We, we've done, you know, where we just have, let's say, yards. We still look at those and, and try to make improvements there that don't always get mentioned. Bluegrass is a great question. When I first, uh, well, when we first acquired Tri-State, which is in 2016, I, I toured the facilities, and that was one of the ones I really wanted to work on. I particularly wanted to work on the driver's lounge. Um, I think it needs to be updated. It is not, right now, one of our highest priorities because the, the facility does function well, it works. Uh, I had some higher priorities. Is uh, So, doing something at, at uh, Bluegrass is absolutely on my list. It's not yet at the top of my list. I don't know if it's going to get there, honestly, in 2020, but I'd really like to do something significant in, uh, in bluegrass, primarily in the uh, revamping the, uh, the driver's lounge to kind of bring it up to this kind of standard. So very good question, very fair question. Um, so far, there's nothing new. Okay. Well, again, most of all, thank you guys. Uh, appreciate it. I know I haven't expressed it as much as I'd like to the last couple of months. Really uh, appreciate everything that you do. We can't do anything without you guys. You're the, you're the best, uh, you know, best in the market by far, and I, I appreciate it every day. Thank you very much. Thank you.